Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here again. You know it's political season and we're doing our best to introduce you to a lot of the candidates that are going to be on the uh, ticket this primary. We've got another gentleman here, you might recognize him, and uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Sir, who are you? Yeah, uh, I'm Jesse Bohannon. Um, I'm a Republican candidate for the Indiana House of Representatives. Excellent. So, uh, Jesse Bohannon here. Now, uh, Jesse, you are from? Um, I'm from Bremen. Okay. Um, I had the, the privilege of growing up during probably what was the, the best 10-year period of time to go to a small school. I can think of probably anywhere in uh, Indiana. I uh, was a part of uh, two state finals football teams yeah, there. Yeah, And um, just... Uh, really enjoyed the experience of, of everything that a kid can have in small schools and, and that's that's part of why I value our small schools so much. So. That's that's excellent and uh, you know of course we serve nothing but small schools in our area so uh, we like the small hometown feel and there's a certain amount of pride integrity and character that comes with that that gets built in those small communities so yeah. I'm glad you're trying to take that to the next level and yeah. represent here. Mm -hmm. Now talk to us, this district that you're running for, mm -hmm. where's where's the boundaries of this district? Um, so it's, it's all of Marshall County mm -hmm. and then down here in Fulton County uh, we do the three townships across uh, the northern uh, Abenabi and Richland and Newcastle okay. and then we've got uh, Henry Township out there to the east and yeah. then uh, Rochester as well okay. so yeah very good so you're on the Republican ticket yes sir um, you have uh, primary contestants right so it's it's a rematch of uh, the race that was won uh, run uh, two years ago back in 2016 um, Jack Jordan is the incumbent legislator um, I say that I was very uh, treated very well by the folks down here in Fulton County uh, we won the uh, the county portions nice. of Fulton um, last year and that was part of the encouragement about uh, why it would make sense to run again um, if, if you had told me back in in 2015 before we started this the whole thing that I would get 5,000 votes in the Republican primary Primary, I would say, well, I'm going to be state representative. Right. Um, but the turnout was so high yeah. because Ted Cruz and uh, the President Trump yep. um, were here in Indiana, and it was really the first time we had had a relevant Republican primary since uh, Reagan and Ford back in 1976. Right, right. And so um, we ran our race based on. Um, you know, with real grassroots expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was driving for me and I was out knocking on doors and I, I knocked on almost every voter's door here in Fulton County wow. um, <laughs> over over a nine month period of time. Wow. And we, we designed it, I said if I hit 5,000 doors, mm -hmm. even though we don't have as much money as the opposition has, we'll have those personal relationships with yeah. people and that'll be, you know, what'll be important. And so um, when it got two weeks to go, and we realized the presidential primary was coming and the turnout was going to be higher. We never thought it would be 11,400. Right, right, <laughs> right. And so um, the, the hypothesis was, um, let's try it again this year. Um, because of you know some of the concerns that I heard from local folks about that they weren't getting the representation that mm -hmm. they wanted that um, the tax and fee increases that went through you know weren't what they had voted for um, and so I thought that I probably had the best chance of anybody in the district um, to uh, to bring some fr uh, some fresh blood into uh, into the general assembly um, and so we're just hoping that the turnout is more favorable for us this year because of you know all the folks that we did make relationships with two sure. years ago. Well, so, that's great. You've had yeah. great numbers in Fulton County. That's fantastic. One of the things that I like, by the way, is is average everyday citizens of Indiana, of Fulton County, of North Central Indiana, stepping up to yeah. represent. Yeah. Um, you put yourself out there, shaking five thousand hands. <laughs> you're you're going to find those that like you, yeah. that don't like you. That hate you, that love you. You're going to yeah. see the spectrum. Well, and I always feel right at home here Good. at Fulton County, um, and and so encouraged to see um, the uh, the activism and the the participation of, of people here in Fulton County. Um, I had heard back in the fall um, all of the controversy surrounding the wind farms down mm -hmm. here, and I went down to the meeting in uh, um, in Fulton. Yeah, I was in mm -hmm. Fulton, and I had never seen that many people show up for a, a, a public meeting before. I grew up, um, before we moved to Bremen when I was in high school, we lived up in St. Joe County. Okay. And so I was a part of the original activist groups back in the early 90s, fighting local income taxes, yep. fighting gun control, things like that, in a Democrat county. Mm -hmm. 
and even in a county with you know with almost uh, two hundred thousand people in it, like St. Joe County has, I had never seen turnout like what we saw in in Fulton back in the fall. So that's I, great. That excites me that, that Fulton County's got uh, such uh, great uh, participation in its politics. So. Well, I think we do. I'll tell you, we've we've gone out, and I know you've seen it here on Channel Four, folks, where we've done the legislative breakfast hosted mm -hmm. by the Chamber of yep. Commerce. And the crowds to those at 7 o'clock in the morning yeah. on a Saturday are amazing. And yeah. I, I know that the representatives who've been to those meetings um, comment on how yeah. well attended they are here in Fulton County. Yeah. So that's great. Let's talk about your platform a little yeah. bit. Um, you know, what do you stand for? What are you fighting for on behalf of the Hoosiers here? Yeah. So I think one of the things I've learned watching the General Assembly over the last... Um, six or seven years is that you never know what it is that you're going to get into when you get down there. Yeah. You think you know what the agenda is going to be um, and something will come up. And so I think the most important thing that a legislator takes with them is a set of solid principles. Yeah. Um, and so um, the number one issue for me, which, which should be, I think, the number one issue for, for every Republican is, is the right to life. Mm -hmm. And um, that's uh, one of the bills I plan on uh, working on uh, next session. Okay. Uh, Kurt Nisley, the state rep uh, mm -hmm. over in uh, Kosciuszko County, has uh, put forward a uh, protection of conception bill the last couple of sessions. Okay. And I want to do what I can to, to help him uh, get that to the floor and get a vote. Um, and uh, then our other rights, the, uh, the right to keep and bear arms mm -hmm. and uh, right to privacy, uh, parental rights, things like that. We always have to keep those things front of mind because um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming from lobbyists and coming from other people in Indianapolis that want to distract us. Mm -hmm. If we stay focused on the fundamentals, we'll, we'll make right decisions. Gotcha. Um, but also, as I said earlier, our small schools. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's a culture in Indianapolis that wants to make the state like Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, they want to put J turns in on our highways and they want to make sure people can get from South Bend to Indy and from South Bend to Fort Wayne mm -hmm. as quick as possible. And it's it's like in DC they think about Indiana being flyover country. Right. In in uh, Indianapolis they think of Fulton County and Marshall County of drive, 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 drive through mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I want to make sure um, that we're fully funding our local schools, yeah. that we're respecting the fact that uh, you shouldn't put a kid on a bus for an hour, you know, to get to school. Right. And uh, um, you want to make sure we're keeping small class sizes mm -hmm. and the kids have the opportunity to participate in, in activities. You know, um, we looked at a lot of places when we decided to go to Bremen 25 years ago. Yeah. And so we looked at, uh, we looked at Penn mm -hmm. <laughs> and we looked at Bremen mm -hmm. and looking back at it, um, Penn won a state championship when I was in school as well, but I wouldn't have been on that team right. because I would have I would have been I would have got to play JV till I That's was right. a senior or till I was a junior, and then I would have been yeah. out, out in the stands. Opportunities yeah. come um, in the smaller communities, yeah. uh, and that's something that we kind of overlooked. But yeah. and, 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 and Indianapolis, Indianapolis doesn't understand that. Right. You know, we need to make sure that uh, that we're providing the baseline funding to sure. keep our small schools open and make sure they can thrive. So excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, um, now, besides running for state representative here, mm -hmm. what do you do in your other time here? You're a business um, owner, yeah. correct? Yep. Tell people um, about that. I have had uh, a tremendous blessing to be able to partner with our former state representative, Tim Harmon, who okay. did such a great job uh, yep. for us for four years. Um, he founded the Bourbon Street Pizza franchise uh, several years ago, and uh, I've been working with him for the last four years. Great. Um, and right now, I am the operating partner at our store in Argus okay. and our store in Culver. Okay. And um, both of those are fantastic communities, yeah. and uh, I, we actually serve folks from uh, Fulton County yeah. uh, very often. We get a lot of people from Rock Rochester drive up old 31 and, and go up to through. Argus and grab it. So I, I see a lot of zebra gear in That's there on, uh, on Friday and Saturday nights, and, and we love uh, having folks from Fulton County up at our restaurant. Well, that's so. a lot of fun. Now, you have one of those Bourbon Street pizzas in uh, Mentone, yep. Bremen, Argus, Culver. Uh, we're not in Bremen yet. You're not in Bremen. Uh, we're in Bourbon. Bourbon. Uh, yeah, Bourbon, Culver, Plymouth, Argus, Mentone, Napanee, North Webster. Uh, yeah, just the seven right now. <laughs> That's great. And actually, we're going to open in South Bend uh, coming up next year. That's fantastic. So, Maybe yeah. we can talk them into coming down yeah. here in Rochester. <laughs> but uh, it's good pizza, folks. If you've not been up to Argus or Bourbon or any of these yeah. places, make a trip. It's it's yeah. good stuff. So and we actually we actually deliver to uh, northern portions of, uh, of Richland Township. Okay. As well. So if you live in Richland Center or uh, or Tyasa, uh, <laughs> give us a call. We'd love to deliver to you. Nice. So. Well, I might just have meet me there at one ten and uh, <laughs> grab some pizza from you. But that's great. Yeah. 
Now, tell us just a little bit about your personal life. Um, married, kids, what's the situation in your um, life? I'm, uh, I'm actually single, okay. uh, no kids. Um, I've, I've spent uh, most of my life focused on, uh, on service in, in one way or the yeah. other. So I uh, did uh, um, ministry at a uh, missionary church up in uh, Napanee Excellent. Uh, for a number of years working with the young adults ministry there and uh, also uh, spent four years uh, teaching at a uh, alternative private school working with kids that, that struggle and those kind of things have taken up a lot of my life. Sure. And now that I'm working second shift in the food service industry, yeah. um, it's uh, <laughs> you don't get a lot of personal life. So. It's a lot of labor of love, yeah. isn't it? It is, um, but I'm, I'm currently on the school board in Bremen, uh, where I graduated, and uh, um, we've. Uh, I feel really proud about the work that we've done over the last year and a half uh, there, and have learned a lot about the the craziness about how government finance works in this state, and yeah. some of the hoops that you have to jump through yeah. to to make things work. And, and so I, I understand the the struggles that our schools face. So well, very good. Yeah. Well, uh, folks are going to want to know more about you, Jesse. Let's tell them uh, first of all. You I assume have a website or a Facebook or something. Um, yeah, you can uh, go to jesseforindiana.com, okay. and you can spell that anywhere you like to, and it's going <laughs> to still pop. That, yeah, that'll actually uh, kick you over to our Facebook page. Great. Um, what I've learned over the years is is people like to have that kind of interaction, mm-hmm. and Facebook is really great about, you know, people leave you a message, and it lets yeah. you know right away. Um, you can also call me. Um, I always publish my phone number on, okay. uh, on my um Printed material. So if you've gotten a letter or a postcard recently, uh, 574 220 8809 is my cell phone number. Great. And uh, I've published that every time I've run for office. <laughs> and surprisingly enough, you don't get a ton of calls. Right. But I always do appreciate hearing from folks and, you know, not just those conversations at the door, but when something comes up and people have a need. You know, that's something I learned from Tim Harmon is that uh, this job is not about going down to Indianapolis and casting votes and right. hanging out with important people and right. things like that. It's about taking care of individual voters when they have issues, and that's that's what I look forward to. Putting so. that cell number out there, that's accessibility, and that's what we want. That's what we need as a constituency is we need to be able to reach out and have access to you folks. I can't imagine uh, trying to get a personal conversation with yeah. um, one of our national representatives right. you know it's the hoopla you have to go through so to be putting out your cell phone yeah. that that just kind of shows you what kind of leader you'll be yeah, yeah. jackie walorski represents uh almost seven hundred thousand people exactly. as a state representative it's sixty five thousand. Yeah. and you know when you look at you know who are the people that are going to reach out and have questions it's a very manageable amount and and people should you know keep office hours yeah. and and be available. Um, I'm planning on um, bringing back the pizza and politics uh, lunches on Fridays. Nice. And so, um, <laughs> you know, during session, we're going to do that uh, probably uh, every two weeks. I like have the opportunity to come back and let folks come in, have some pizza, talk about what's going on Great. in the General Assembly. And then at least quarterly, you should be, you know, even when the General Assembly is not in session, mm-hmm. holding public events, being available for people mm-hmm. so they can come in and share their thoughts and concerns. So True representation, yeah. right? Excellent. Well, yeah. Jesse Bohannon, anything else for our viewers today? Um, just, I really want to say thank you uh, to the folks of Fulton County for their great support back in 2016, uh, for the warm welcome that they've given me as I've been out knocking on doors again this year, and I would just really appreciate your vote again. Um, as always, feel free to give me a call if there's anything I can do for you. So Excellent. Well, thank you very, very much for being here today. Folks, you know it's coming up May 8th, um, just a couple of days, <laughs> so uh, be ready. Get out there. Your vote does count. The primaries are are very contested this year across both sides of the aisle so whatever your political affiliation get out there and cast your vote for your representation jesse again thank you for your time today thank you very much all right we'll see you next time here on rtc tv4